So hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the presentation. My name is Esteban Arias. I'm a software engineer for IBM. Um, I will be presenting a little bit of uh, the work that we have done together with the, the OpenStack Cloud, uh, particularly for a product called VMware Integrated OpenStack, how we uh, deploy it in the software cloud as a part of a project. Um, and this is Arvind. Yeah, hi, this is Ar uh, Arvind Soni. I lead our OpenStack efforts here at VMware uh, as a product manager. That's why I will let Esteban go first so that he will lend credibility to whatever claims I do later on, right? So that's a good flow. All right, Esteban. Thank you. So uh, as I was saying, uh, my role within IBM is particularly integrating products. Uh, so I ended up with my team on a series of uh, projects that require integration of different platforms. So we ended up doing uh, VMware integrated OpenStack on top of SoftLayer. So we will, be, we will describe a little bit what was the mindset, the key points around it, and uh, particularly deploying it as a part of a enterprise workload was a little bit challenging. But uh, I, the idea is to get you a uh, what was the mindset and the lessons learned out of it, right? So, okay. So key points there. Uh, OpenStack on soft layer with uh, VMware. We, as the, you probably remember, uh, at the time of the interconnect this year, so at the conference, it was announced that um, we had now the luxury of having a vetted, battle-tested architecture for running VMware workloads in SoftLayer, right? So uh, when you see that panorama, you kind of uh, go into the idea that you can take that leverage and uh, integrate some other different products, right? So that was the case with OpenStack, right? Uh, nowadays, people are not seeing it anymore as uh, one or the other, but how you can get the two working together in, in best interest of your customer, right? So uh, we took a piece out of it, right, out of the uh, architecture, and we lay, lay out B VMware integrated OpenStack on top of that for a series of reasons. But uh, in general, because, uh, and getting into the second uh, key point, capacity, uh, you want disaster recovery out of it, you want migration um, capabilities. Now we are seeing, uh, particularly for the case of uh, soft layer, we are seeing people who is uh, posting uh, uh, architectures that can take a VM out of uh, Amsterdam and put it into a data center in Washington, D.C., and just using soft layer private network. So that, that, those capabilities regarding uh, what you have behind the OpenStack cloud are really a, an, an added value, and, and we took advantage of it. Uh, some other reasons are also uh, the multi-tenant environments that you can have, like the F-Test lab, so we took advantage of that. Uh, we also gain uh, really confident out of the customer when you start talking about certified environments, so you can have uh, things like HIPAA compliance environments, environments that uh, respond to Nessus scans uh, out, of the, out, of the, out of the box. That kind of thing is what uh, really adds value to it. Uh, another key point was the, that we wanted to start single region, right, and be able to scale worldwide. So probably you know already that Software has 23 data centers. You can start VMs in Mexico and end up in Melbourne. And uh, all those provide with uh, capabilities, in, in particular when connecting all the different hypervisors uh, in expanding the, the realm of your OpenStack cloud. Uh, we want it to be agile and private hybrid. So obviously, and, and someone was mentioning in the morning in a in a presentation as well, you want to compete uh, against a very robust platform, and that has to be done with uh, these kind of capabilities. So, particularly speaking about AWS, uh, we wanted to have, particularly in this project, we needed to have 
auto scaling capabilities and uh, provide that on a tenant basis. So uh, tied together with that, we had the, the use case of integrating this workload with an already extensive footprint of uh, VMware uh, VMs that the customer already had in, in sublayer. So that, if you put all that together, you kind of uh, provide with a panorama that it, it's about integration. So that's the key message on, on this, right? So about the building blocks that we had uh, our, uh, available for us to build this, uh, you have three main uh, points. You have compute with the capabilities of sublayer of, on bare metal servers. So once you get your, your, your account with them, right, uh, you start getting different uh, provision capabilities. So you can start with uh, bare metals that are different uh, flavors in sizes and processors. You can have uh, comprehensive uh, network management out of band. So that's really a key factor when, when deploying your, your hypervisors that provide uh, the foundation for the, for, the, for the cloud. You have a model of networking that is consistent of three, three layers. So you have public uh, facing interfaces, you have private facing interfaces, and you have management interfaces. So that gives you a, a quite a bit of flexibilities in terms of uh, working the cloud and working with uh, the, the, all the NOAA computer nodes and the uh, neutral nodes. You have storage, which is critical on this piece uh, because you have uh, now the flexibility of having uh, these bare metal nodes with all SSDs configurations. Uh, so that gives you uh, an underlying layer that you can leverage with Bs and products and that uh, connected with the OpenStack cloud in VMware running the workloads of uh, Cinder and Glance gives you a very extensive uh, framework. Uh, also, you have some other uh, storage options like block storage, file storage, and ob object storage that you can also leverage in order to serve the data stores that eventually will be translated into the um, pieces of the OpenStack cloud storage uh, underlying system. We had a series of software components that uh, were uh, intended to uh, fit into the, product, into the project. The first one of them was the Urban Code Deploy, which provided us with a blueprint designer uh, UI that basically connected to the uh, VIO, providing the VIO, the VMware Integrated OpenStack, providing the full orchestration out of it. So it, it was kind of uh, very interesting having a UI that you can drag and drop different uh, agents into the um, objects that you already imported out of the OpenStack cloud. So the customer ended up with uh, all these different agents that you can deploy it several times and you can, you can update on single basis. So uh, I hope it does show, but uh, on the right hand side you will see, uh, sorry, on the left hand side you will see different objects imported out of the, out of the OpenStack cloud directly seen uh, without having to interact with any other API, but uh, heat and silometer for that, for that case. So you have the blueprint designer, you have operator tools, or we had operator tools, which were uh, vCenter and vRealize operations. These were intended to provide the customer with tools that were familiar to them in order to check uh, the, the overall status of the VMware cloud, so and the OpenStack cloud. So this ended up being just a supported material, but uh, it's important to mention. Uh, we had on the networking side, we had uh, VMware NSX, which is the uh, endpoint where uh, Neutron was talking in order to provision. And we will see a slide that shows the, the overall workflow. But uh, in general, you will have, uh, on this portion, you will have things like your uh, edge services router and your uh, distributed logical routers. So it's interesting uh, because you eventually consume resources that are uh, 
extendable through the data center. So you don't have to reuse, you, you don't have to create two separate environments, but reuse what you already have. And, and that obviously is part of the uh, reference architecture that I was talking about at the beginning, which is already vetted, right? So that's important. The other point here, uh, and the, the final piece that we were missing was the integrated OpenStack. So if that's uh, a layer on top of, of VMware, it consumes and uh, talks natively with uh, the VMware cloud uh, and manages for this particular uh, environment different tenants on VMs, storage, and networking. So you can see from it uh, things like, for example, uh, images, network, volumes, all those interacting on their line with uh, the VMware Cloud. It's important to mention here, and uh, it, based on my experience, that the VMware support out of it, it's, uh, ver it was very helpful because at the end you, you end up uh, troubleshooting issues that are related to both environments, so it's, it's something that uh, adds uh, a, a layer of uh, actional items on it. So this, this was the framework. Uh, regarding the integrated OpenStack, a couple of uh, lessons learned there. One is that the, it's an integrated appliance, so that means that it's an OVA. That was a familiar uh, language for our customer. Uh, so basically, it's a prepackaged image that will expand into a complete installation. So the moment that you deploy it, uh, you will have to connect, connect things like uh, your Nova cluster, your, uh, your data stores, your glanced uh, data stores, your networking manager. So that takes you to the deployment mode, which could be NSX uh, control. Right, so overlaying, net, overlaying networks, or you can do standard DBS. So when, when you start talking all these topics to a uh, networking engineer who is familiar with uh, the both, right, you, you start getting into what they, they call a POC or a production mode. So uh, you can deploy VMware integrated OpenStack in a POC, which is basically the same as the production one, but without uh, availability. So you can have a small subset of the capabilities, you can show them, you can prove value out of it, and then eventually you can migrate that workload into a production one. So uh, that's, that's how the appliance work. And, and it's, in my opinion, it's fairly uh, simple to deploy once you have it uh, totally architected, in, particularly in the networking piece, because again, uh, when you have top layer, you have multiple servers and you have different sets of uh, capabilities in network on, on them. So you have to be careful with uh, the partition schema that you will put into, this, into those networks and that's the way that it, it's gonna connect. So moving forward, this is the workflow that I was talking. Uh, you can see on uh, point number one, so that's DevOps, how they request. On, on our case, it was the urban code deploy, the designer. So, you, you can do that, obviously, in different ways. Uh, we did it in urban code deploy, and we did it all using HIT directly. So you provision, you request, the OpenStack Cloud will uh, reply back with traditional tools, right? Keystone, uh, Nova, Cinder, Glance, Neutron. And then you migrate into what is known, or, or what was known for this particular customer, the, on point number two. So we go and we talk two tools that they already have. So do we talk to NSX and we talk to the vCenter, which uh, translate the, into uh, the underlying uh, based infrastructure, the ESXIs, and the, all the rest of the, of the components that we have there. So you can have uh, V switches, you can have uh, data stores, and those might be serving as well some other infrastructure. So that's why I was talking about uh, Integration. So once you get all that running, you can have uh, multiple tenants and or projects, or and you can have uh, and and this is going to be a discussion that uh, tomorrow it's going to be a very interesting talk on that. So you can have uh, single tenant routers, or you can have uh, share uh, provided network. So uh, I invite you to go to that one. Uh, but in general, you will have these routers serving. Uh, 
on, their uh, on top of infrastructure that will eventually connect public and uh, private networks. So you start, th you start throwing things like floating IPs out of the provisioning systems of layer. So that's, that's where it gets interested. So you end up in point number three uh, with the infrastructure managed by OpenStack uh, and supported by uh, VMware on soft layer. So it's a win-win situation. Uh, All together, as I was saying, you can have uh, the urban code uh, on at the bottom, one of the scaling policies that we were talking about. Uh, heat and silomir were key, key parts of this. So uh, on, the, on, on your left-hand side, you will see one of the blueprint uh, instances how it had a couple of agents that are uh, really probable and uh, customi you can customize them. And, and uh, that serving an auto scale po policy that eventually will uh, scale out the, the, um, the environment up to the entire infrastructure that you have. And that is where it gets really interesting because if you take it to the next level, right, so you will start having constructs uh, at the bottom, right, you will have uh, your, what, what, this is part of the, uh, the architecture that I was referring, uh, tested in soft layer. So at the bottom you have your, your constructs of management clusters, edge clusters, and compute clusters. How they, making these divisions, you can have uh, all the different hypervisors connected into the soft layer cloud uh, using this uh, networking model that I was talking about, the triple net networking model, with uh, public and private VLANs, which at the end uh, take all these SSDs and uh, the NSX portion of it, creating what you can extend across all the data centers. So that is wh where I think that puts the value on it. So on your uh, management cluster, you end up having all the different appliances that are part of your entire cloud. So you can have uh, the, as you can see, the NSX manager, the NSX controller, the VMware integrated OpenStack, and all those serving on the same infrastructure. So you ended up uh, having this base on the left-hand side and extend it uh, all the way to different data centers. So that's, that's a key uh, added value, I think. Uh, this is the VIO production deployment that I was talking about. So you, uh, out of the box, you will have uh, a couple of load balancers. One in, everything is HA pretty much. But uh, in particular, what I think it's important, it's that all these VMs, when uh, set up in the right mode with uh, the partition schema and the networking, are uh, a fairly simple uh, way to in introduce and, and, and uh, provision the entire OpenStack cloud with pretty much uh, no effort, right? So it's just planning and architect. So you can see uh, things like the database node which is triply replicated. So if you take that and put it into another tool like the uh, disaster recovery uh, storage replication, you, you, have, you end up having a very robust uh, uh, infrastructure and underlying uh, on top of uh, the integrated OpenStack. Uh, a key, key piece of advice, as I was saying, um, the leveraging tools like uh, the vSphere data protection and uh, replicating your storage with uh, what software provides you uh, and multi-region, multi-data center resulted into what was a really, really uh, robust design. So uh, it provided us with several use cases in order to uh, gain first trust from the customer and uh, show very, very different scenarios on, on disaster recovery. So that was a very, very key, uh, key differentiator. All right. Thanks, Esteban. Sure. Um, the key thing to remember from Esteban's um, presentation is simplicity, right? You guys have seen all the user survey, and it is centered around three major challenges of OpenStack. Simplicity, stability, scalability. So that's what I'm going to focus upon. But for that, you have to 
agree with this model of OpenStack, which is it's a framework underneath you put different, different products. And we put vSphere, NSX, vSAN, not surprisingly, because those are the products that we can support, and those are some of the best products in the world that we believe, right? So it's a framework that allows you to put different products underneath and build an OpenStack cloud on top of it. And you can replace those products with different combinations, but the key thing is you will get the same APIs, the same tools. Doesn't matter whether you build that OpenStack cloud with vSphere or some other uh, hypervisor, right? So it's a framework that allows you to do this. What is inside of VIO, as, uh, as Saman pointed out, it's essentially a standard distribution of OpenStack. It has all the core components that you would expect, Keystone, Horizon, Heat, Silometer, Nova, Neutron, Glance, and everything that you would need to run a really nice production-ready OpenStack, all delivered in a HA architecture. You don't have to sit there and scratch, how am I going to architect my message queues and databases and Nova and Neutron? No, none of that. It comes with a proven, tested architecture which will work for up to 5,000 to 6,000 virtual machines in a single vCenter. So that's for the scale, right, to start with. Fully supported by VMware, anything breaks in there, Nova breaks, you have a security issue on the operating system where it is running, underlying vSphere is having an issue, NSX is having a problem, we'll take the call. We'll deliver the fix, you will get the hot patch, and good thing is VIO has a built-in patching mechanism uh, along with reverts, so it's not like you have to keep a notebook and, oh, I did a step one, two, three, holy shit, it didn't work, now I have to go back. No, none of that, right? It doesn't work, there's a revert command, it will revert the package, restart the services. This is what is needed for operators to run a cloud. From a cons consumer perspective, yes, it's all great. You give them OpenStack APIs, let them lose, they will start breaking the cloud, right? That's what happens. So operators are the ones that need most of the tooling. Consumers, they are ser being served more than plenty in the open source community, right? These are all the things that came out of the 2016 survey, and I was talking um, in, in the beginning. It's really about making things simple, making things stable, making things scalable, right? So let's see. Of course, I'm going to claim that we do all of those things, not surprising, right? That's why I let Astaman go earlier, and you saw some of the things, how they play out. Right? So in terms of simplicity, where does simplicity come from, from for, for VIO? What, what is the secret magic that we are doing? Well, not, not necessarily much of a magic, right? We have a decoupled architecture. I'm going to talk a little bit more, but that decoupled architecture is at the heart of why things are very simple when you run OpenStack on vSphere and NSX. Right? So that, that's where it comes from. And we provide a lot of tools, as I said, patching, upgrade, backup, recovery, monitoring, troubleshooting. All those are needed to run a cloud. So without those tools, things become complex. Right? So not much of a surprise over there. Where does the stability come from? Well, vSphere has been proven to run like hundreds of thousands of workload. And you say, well, I only, I'm, uh, I'm only going to run cattles on top of it. Fine, just turn off the DRS and HA and vMotion. You still have those operational benefits. It's a, way, it's a battle tested hypervisor that works with a lot of, it has a lot of compatibility tests done with several storage vendors across the world, several networking vendors across the world. That stability, whether you are running a cattle or a pet, is going to give you a really robust environment. Your VMs will not run into a kernel panic. You will not get a blue screen on top of Windows machines running in a KVM, right? So that, that's pretty much the gist of it. Those products themselves are battle tested. OpenStack is running on top of it. Uh, and provisioning workload to them. And as I said, when things don't work, we patch them, right? When there are security issues, we patch them and give you the support. Scale. Um, scale is an interesting beast. Um, I mean, you gotta have a, if you, if you want to build something as large as some, or anywhere near AWS kind of scale, you have to have a building block. And that building block better scale along with operations as well, right? It can't just be that you put hundreds of hypervisors and you, you have no tooling how to operate them. So it has to have things like vCenter. I'm not saying you have exactly vCenter, but you have to have some tools where you can go and manage a bunch of hosts, provision storage on top of it, provision switches, remove the VLANs, update the VLANs, and things like that. Without that, operations will become very difficult as you grow uh, larger in scale. Okay. So what was the decoupled architecture that I was talking about? When you run OpenStack on top of vSphere, OpenStack is not talking to any ESX host. There is no agent in the ESX host. There is no Nova agent, no Neutron agent, nothing. The ESX host that 
tenant workload control plane, uh, data plane is completely separated from OpenStack control plane. You can imagine what does that do, right? Now I can keep changing my OpenStack control plane, applying patches, upgraded, deleted, backup, doesn't matter. The workloads are running safely on top of ESX. So that's why the patching, troubleshooting, upgrade, everything becomes simpler in our case because it's not like every time I have to do a change in Nova, I have to go update the Nova agent and I have to do a rolling and control and uh, those kind of coordination. So that's the fundamental piece why VIO or OpenStack running in general on top of vSphere and NSX becomes much more simple. This is at the heart of it, right? We have a, a decoupled architecture in this uh, for running OpenStack. We were not happy with the simplicity that we have, really. Uh, what we wanted is, can we run OpenStack in one virtual machine, and whether it is good or not? So we tried it. We said, okay, let's go back to the dev stack days uh, and see whether dev stack is actually good for production. CI, CD workloads, you can run you know, some things which are not mission critical, give it for demo, lab, testing, whatever, right? Uh, and actually we found out that the single VM VIO is pretty good for like several thousands of VMs on, on, on decent high concurrency. So why not, right? I mean, you, every one of us has remote offices in Boston, in Arizona, small offices. You can set up OpenStack clouds for them. So what we will do is, uh, in coming months, right now it's in tech preview, 2.5 is gonna come out soon um, in, in a couple of months. It, it will be in tech preview. You can deploy all of OpenStack, the same architecture that Esteban showed running in production, the same architecture in a mini form inside one VM. This is simplicity, right? Really, five to 10 minutes for a complete almost production ready, it does not have HA, but you can start over there and we'll provide you a migration path to the full-blown architecture, which is also not very bad. It's just about seven VMs, two load balancers, two controllers, and three databases, right? And I have to you know, share the fact that this work has been, that, that compact architecture is made feasible because of all the hard work in the community, right? The Ferno tokens have uh, almost reduced the need for memcache. It's much more compact tokens, right? The reduced chatter between Nova and Neutron is going to help us uh, not, you know, not worry about the message queues that much. So it, there's been a lot of improvement in the community which makes that compact architecture feasible. We don't need separate message queues and memcache servers, right? In fact, we don't need separate message queues because our message queues don't get bombarded at all because of that decoupled architecture, right? And as I was talking about simplicity, without operational tools, running a cloud is like hell, right? We didn't have a syslog integration when you, we used to do POCs in the early days, and everyone knows that OpenStack is very generous when it comes to logs, and they're all scattered everywhere, right? So without a syslog, just simple thing, but without a syslog, you can't find out why Nova, is not, Nova, Nova VM is not getting an IP. So what we have done is paid excruciatingly detailed attention to operations. Right? To the extent that each one of these was like a P0 in, in version one of the product, that no, we have to have patching, we have to have upgrade. Without this, we cannot go to market, right? So there is, there's been very, very uh, focused effort in making sure that you can actually operate OpenStack very cleanly with complete support. Uh, and these are all the features that are already supported. And notice the last one, when people say, hey, we, we are going to run pets, we don't care about vMotion. What happens when you have to retire an entire rack of server? Well, then you have to sit down and write scripts and live migrate things, and that's really just a push button in vSphere. Put them in maintenance mode, move them over, you're fine, right? So this, this is the power of, of what vSphere has built over 10 years. The ability to operate a really large-scale data center using vSphere, and now OpenStack brings even larger scale to it. Right? All right. So all of this does not matter much to the consumers. They get the same OpenStack APIs, right? But they care when your environment does not give them the SLAs. When the v when they ask for VMs and they don't get the VM or the IP is not coming through then they will complain. And that's where stability becomes very important. If you don't have a stable cloud, might not even have a cloud. Right? It's not worth it. Let them go to AWS. So stability has a lot of other factors, right? What products you choose is absolutely crucial. And not just the quality of those products. Whether you can operate those products, do you have in-house expertise? Choose the products that you know you can operate. I mean, it, it sounds pretty trivial, but we have seen people and doing innovations, a lot of innovations in one go. You choose three different products, you choose OpenStack, all new, nobody knows how to operate, and it kind of becomes very difficult. 
right? So use the products that you know how to operate. Use the products that you can get support from. Uh, and our pitch is uh, not surprisingly that these are some of the best products that you can choose. Whether you want to choose all of them or some of them, for example, NSX does work with KVM. There are some large OpenStack deployments that use NSX with KVM. Uh, so whether you choose all of it or some of it, um, we believe that this is one of the best ways for you to build not just OpenStack but any kind of cloud in your data center. Mainly because these are very, very stable. Uh, there is a single point of support from VMware, and every company out there now has good amount of expertise, or you can hire those expertise pretty cheaply as compared to OpenStack expertise, which you can hire pretty much here. That's it. Outside in the market, we didn't find any. Okay, scale. Uh, building block approach is very important here, right? As I mentioned, I, you gotta have a building block template and then just rinse and repeat so that you can go and, and build something similar to like, Availability zone, east, west, region east, region west. But before you go all the way there, you've got to have a building block. And in our case, the building block is essentially vCenter, NSX, and the clusters underneath it. You put OpenStack on top of it. Uh, we are working so that you can put one OpenStack and use multiple vCenters. Uh, it's not there yet, but that's the goal. But you can imagine that once you have this, the key thing to note is the operations remains the same, right? You can have the same operator going into that vCenter inside the availability zone US East and do the manipulations and operations. Then the same guy can actually log in into the West region into the vCenter and do the operations. This is called the uniform operational model. And it should not be that the 100th server that you have to do is completely different. No, right? I mean, otherwise it will be very fragmented scale. So uniformity of operations is absolutely essential. And that's why uh, vCenter and NSX Manager, they help, because they can help you see the visibility, uh, give you visibility into the infrastructure and help you operate it, right? Uh, those are the key things I had. Let me show you one quick demo while uh, I think we have a couple of minutes. So this demo is essentially an example of uh, what we are doing, some of the operational things that we are doing um, so that it will help you so there was this tool called uh, OS Profiler, which was essentially languishing somewhere in, in, the, in the open source world out there. And OS Profiler is essentially an instrumentation of all the OpenStack services. NOAA, Newton, Cinder, we have essentially done an instrumentation using this OS Profiler, but this is actually very, very useful. What it does is you can go ahead and uh, you can say, okay, enable sort of profiling if it runs, right? So don't worry about the commands if you, don't, if you can't see them. It's essentially uh, what it's doing is going ahead and enabling the profiling. Say, okay, I want to trace what's going on with this API call, right? So it will set the profiler to true, and then it will come, come out, and you can run the command, right? So in this case, we'll say, okay, cinder some create uh, volume and attach volume. So we'll see what happens behind the scenes, right? And it generates a nice uh, stack uh, trace file here, like this uh, long UUID stuff. And you can convert it into an HTML. And this is absolutely gold, by the way. I mean, it looks pretty simple. But we have spent several hours with a lot of our production customers figuring this out. Why is this API slow? Why is no one VM not getting an IP? Where is, is the DB really slow, or is the message queue the problem, or where is the issue, right? So this gives you a complete trace along with the time window. And this is, by the way, open source tool, so you guys can also go use it. Um, it gives you an idea of the breakdown of where the time is getting consumed, where the bottlenecks are, things like that. So anytime you have an issue, you can turn this on. You can run some performance and get a complete idea. This is what I meant when I said like we have a very you know um, focused effort on operations. Because without operations, these things are of private cloud are not going to scale and not going to function. So that, that's pretty much all I had. Uh, we'll open it up for questions. Um, the, the key thing, uh, essentially, the message is, look, if you, if you want to build OpenStack Cloud on top of vSphere and NSX, VIO, which is available free of cost, and will support vSphere standard, which is our lowest vSphere SKU. I think it comes at $995 per CPU, something like that. Uh, starting with VIO 2.5, you can use that if you're using NSX, right? Um, and VIO itself is free, so give it a shot. Um, and let us know whether you like it or not, okay? With that, any questions?
you can, feel, you can come out. Feel free to shout it out or come over to the mic. Shout it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's what I was mentioning. Multiple vCenters within one control plane is what we are working on. Once we get that, uh, then you can scale more, more and more. Right now, in our uh, some of the earlier customers, we know from their production workload, not our lab tests. Yes, there we can push even further. But in actual production environments, one vCenter, about 5,000 VMs, uh, 5,000 volumes, so total 10,000 objects inside vCenter is good for out of the box. It's pretty good. Any other questions? No container questions? Come on. You guys had your share of containers here? All right. Any operations questions? Any vSphere administrators in the house? People who know vSphere? Ah, good. Cool. cool. For those who don't know, you can download vSphere as well. Trial license, 60 days free. <coughs> VIO is free with it. Question? Question. Uh, you, you can not with VIO because we can't support it. Like you, you will have to go build your own distribution or get some other distribution. The, it will otherwise it will just break the support. You will call us and we'll be like Cisco ACI. What we don't know anything about it. Right. It's mostly support problem. We don't do testing with it. Not gonna. Be. Otherwise, you you can take the code. You can hack it up, change it, but you will have to support it. Thank right. you. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. <laughs>